Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video, I'm going to talk about building series and parallel combinations of resistors. And we'll look at how we actually implement those on a breadboard and some of the electrical characteristics of, uh, of those configurations. Okay, so at this point, we haven't really looked at any circuit analysis techniques. So in this video, we're really just looking at the configurations that you might see in a common circuit. And so the first one that is very popular uh, or very common is a series combination. And so we have resistors, that's our first kind of passive component that we looked at. And all series means is that they are in a line. Okay, so if I had two resistors, R1 and R2, these would be considered in series with each other. Okay, and circuits are built of, there's no way around it, Cir circuits are built of series and parallel configurations of components. And so when you look at this, these two are in series, and it can be any arbitrary number, so you can have, even have like uh, three resistors in series, and that's just what we call a series combination. Now, when I look at that, there's a, some interesting properties, or there's at least one interesting property that I can identify right away with, with respect to electrical quantities, and that is that the current is the same through all of them. And remember, current, you know, it's a flow of charge, uh, so I'd imagine the electrons are flowing through here. The reason it's the same as it goes through the, all of them is because there's nowhere else for it to go, okay? There's not like a path here where the current could, could to, you know, split and go somewhere else. These all have the same current that flows through them. So we always know that when we have something in series, it's got the same current for all the components through it. And that's really nice. Another thing that is an observation that isn't, doesn't give us much <laughs> is that uh, each one of these has its own voltage. Okay, so V1, V2, and V3, but they are all given by Ohm's law, so V equals IR, and luckily the I is all the same. Okay, so this allows us to kind of quickly identify, you know, techniques in order to analyze the circuitry. And what we'll see as we learn as we learn circuit uh, analysis techni techniques, we'll be able to kind of quickly figure out how to combine these and figure out electrical quantities very quickly. If I wanted to know the equivalent resistance of this series combination, what I would do is I would actually measure right here with a multimeter, okay, so I could come over here and I could measure this with a multimeter in resistance mode, and that would essentially give me what the equivalent resistance of this combination is, okay, so think of this as now we just treat this as kind of like a black box that has, we know it's resistance, but we don't really care, it's made up of three resistors, but what's interesting about that is that if you knew the current, which we did before, okay, we, did, we called it I, and if we did know the voltage that is across this entire network, we could call that V equivalent, and that would, you know, you know V equivalent, and we knew I, we could actually say that uh, V equivalent is equal to Ohm's law, I times R equivalent. And so if we measured, we could, you know, we can figure out what the equivalent resistance of this is by calculating it once we start learning analysis techniques. And we can also do it by measuring it with a multimeter, okay? But you're gonna have like this, we can treat it as this block that's an equivalent resistance and it will have a resistance of the whole thing. And it's seriously dictated by, you know, REQ is nothing more than the equivalent voltage across it over the I through it, and that would be the equivalent resistance, okay? And so it's basically the voltage across all of them, the current going through it. Not a big deal, just kind of an explanation of the topology. Okay, so then what's the other uh, configuration that you can have? Well, that's parallel, okay? And what happens in a parallel network or parallel combination is essentially it's the opposite of series, right? You just have two right here. So let's say you have R1 and R2, and you can have as many as you want, right? Let's, let's do three to keep it consistent. And so you look at that and you go, okay, thanks, <laughs> that's, that's cool, but now we know to call that a parallel combination. Uh, but again, you, you can identify some interesting electrical characteristics of this. First and foremost, if I put a voltage right here, the voltage is the same across all three resistors. And you go, well, how'd you know that? And it's it, you don't have to know any circuit analysis. It's because that's how we connected it. Remember, these are ideal connections that don't have any electrical properties or delay. And so if I just connect two things right here, they are everywhere. So we call this, well, you don't even call it, it's just like it's v, the V is across all of them by connection. You just get connected it to this, you know, this node or this connection right here is the plus side of it, and this is the minus side. Okay, the minus side. That's kind of neat. Uh, however, 
you would also know immediately that the current through them is absolutely not the same because what's going to happen is current through here current through here current through here what's going to happen is current's going to come flowing in this way and it's going to see these three different resistors and depending on their value it will kind of split and go down each one accordingly probably going down all of them but probably more going down the one that has the least resistance to current okay if i was to measure the equivalent resistance of this you would do it just like uh you would do it just like this. You'd basically tie in right here, okay? And you'd basically come over to a multimeter and you would just tie in like that and take a measurement of it and you would take that measurement in resistance mode and that would give you what the resistance is of these three resistors in parallel and that's called the equivalent resistance. At the same time, just like we did with series, you could kind of like pretend that this thing is just like one block, okay, and just say it's all one resistor. And if you knew the voltage across it and you were able to measure somehow the current going in, you could absolutely come up with Ohm's law again and say the voltage equivalent is equal to the I equivalent over the R equivalent, okay, and you just solve for R equivalent, okay, and that's V equivalent over I equivalent, and these are not very interesting equations at this point, but they just show you that it's like the current in and the voltage across, you can treat this as an equivalent resistance. Okay, nice. All right, so if you go to build circuits like this, and I encourage you to, <laughs> the breadboard is kind of a, a set up nicely to do this. So let's say that I wanted to build some series configurations. Remember the terminal strips, the one, two, three, four, five are all connected together, uh, but they're not connected. These terminal strips are not connected to the row below it. So let's put three resistors in series very quickly. I could come along and I could just plop one down, let's just do it down here. We'll go one down, one down. And now I wanna connect this one in series. So what I'd do is I'd make sure I'm in the same terminal strip as the bottom lead or the bottom connection. So those two are in the same terminal strip. And then I come along and I put my third one right here. And that now is my next circuit. Okay, so pop and then pop. And sometimes if you grab, sometimes those leads bend, so I'll just grab a needle nose plier. So those are in the same terminal strips. And then if I wanted to measure what the equivalent resistance was, is I could just basically, number one, you don't want anything else in this circuit. Okay, you don't want any voltage in here, you don't want any current in here. And the reason is, is we just want to measure the resistance of this uh, using a multimeter. And we don't want any, the multimeter is essentially going to put a little test voltage across it and measure the current and do Ohm's law for you. So you don't want any other currents or voltages present. So if I came along here and I said, all right, let's measure this. So I'd break out old trusty and I'd say, all right, I want to be powered on. I want to be in resistance mode. I don't even know what these resistors are at this point. And I would just clip on right here, clip on right there. And I would come up here and I'd just kind of dial through since I don't know what it is. And it looks like this is... Uh, so it's greater than 200. So it's 450 ohms is what these three would be in, in series. Okay. <laughs> we will actually learn circuit analysis techniques so that we can figure that out right away. Okay. Now, if I want to do these in parallel, it's actually kind of even easier because if you look at this, just share the terminal strips, right? So let's do this. Let's just move up and let's put the terminal strip right here. So now that these two are connected in parallel sharing terminal strips, right? And then we'll bring this buddy up. Sometimes if these these wires bend, they don't go in the terminal strips very good. So you have to like hold them to keep them kind of rigid as they go in. And what I'll do is that sometimes I use this this uh, needle nose plier to kind of adjust them. So they're they're all in parallel right there. So I go ahead and do that and that. And now I just want to tie into here to get my resistance and then I'll go into here to get my resistance and bring out old trusty again and we'll put this buddy right there and then we'll just clip on I'm in resistance again resistance again and now I have something less so it's less than 2000 so this is like 50 almost so I go ahead and change it down to here and I end up with 49.8 so it looks like the parallel combination was less equivalent resistance than the series resistance. And that's something that we might want to explore a little bit, maybe in a lab. <laughs> All right.
<laughs> that is it. That is how. That is basically series and parallel resistor combinations. That's how you would measure the equivalent resistance of them for both configurations using a multimeter. And that is it. See ya.